by Ford, creator of Thunderbird Styling, and the Ford dealers of your community, who tonight bring you Gene Nelson, Virginia Field, and Catherine Grant in A Kiss for Santa. It's 4 a.m. Half the world sleeps. But Jim Rogers, trucker, is just starting a day in his new 1956 Ford truck. Jim has more power at his command than last year. Lots more. Ford trucks for 56 have power increases up to 26%. The fact is, Ford trucks now give you more horsepower per dollar than any other truck line. And only Ford gives you short stroke power in every model at no extra cost. You see this functional air scoop? It's available on Ford Big Jobs. This air scoop, together with four barrel carburation and dual exhaust, gives Jim more reserve power when he needs it. You hungry, Jim? Coffee stop? In Jim's new Ford truck, there's a combination of heavy duty engine features found in no other line of trucks. Features like sodium cooled exhaust valves and stress relieved cylinder heads, for example, that add thousands of miles to engine life. They'll be safer miles too, with such exclusive Ford safety firsts as the new lifeguard steering wheel, new double grip lifeguard door latches, and safer tubeless tires. See your Ford dealer soon. Like Jim Rogers, you'll find it pays to own a new Ford truck. Uh, yes, George Jackson. Uh, have you seen him there today? Oh, you haven't. All right, thanks. Oh, I hope George gets here in time for us to catch that train. Look, your brother's an actor. That automatically makes him eccentric and gives him the right to be late. But this is ridiculous. Well, I'll get finished up so we can leave the minute he arrives, huh? Don't forget all that heavy traffic. Melvin, Christmas is only two days away. Can't you wait that long to see what you got? Oh, I already know it's roller skates. I just wanted to see if they were ball bearing. They are not roller skates. It's a football. You're not as clever as you thought you were, are you? That's right, Dad. You're much smarter than I am. I'll get it. That must be Uncle George. At last. Hi, everybody. Here's your babysitter. I'm all set. Hi, sis. Hi. It's about time. Hi, Uncle George. Hi, Melvin. How's the president and only member of the George Jackson fan club? Fine. I saw you on television last week. You did? This boy has marvelous taste. What show did you see? You know, the one where you played the cowboy who came into town to look for the rustlers that killed your brother. You told it better than the writer did. How do you like me? Do you mind if I tell you after you give me my Christmas present? Everybody's a critic. George, you promised to be here on time. Well, I would have, but as I was walking down the street, I saw this little old lady. She was selling Christmas trees. Suddenly, two big bruisers walked up, knocked her down, and took her money. Well, I just couldn't stand there, so I chased them. I chased them for blocks. Finally, I cornered them in the subway. I hit one over the head with a gumball machine, I tripped the other one, and I held him until the police got there. Uncle George, you're a hero! Now tell us what really happened. Well, when I took the garbage down, I locked myself out of the apartment. That's all. That's more like it. Darling, when are you gonna grow up? Don't do it, Uncle George. That's why you're my favorite. You know how to pretend, just like us kids. If you'd come out of your make-believe world, we might be going to your wedding instead of Gussie's. Now, don't you worry, sis. I'll find you a sister-in-law yet. Oh. As soon as he finds a girl who believes in fairy tales. <laughs> hey, listen, you better hurry. Oh, we'll yeah. be late for that train. All right. I hope I didn't hold you up. No, that's all right. There we go. <sighs> Sally, no kidding. All this for a two-day trip to Maine? Oh, don't be silly. I packed light. <laughs> Goodbye, darling. Be a good boy now, huh? Mm -hmm. Find your Uncle George. And, and, darling, thanks so much for staying here to look after Melvin. I'm glad to do it for one of my loyal fans. <laughs> Goodbye, son. Be a good boy. Bye. I'll see you both Christmas morning. Yeah. Bye. Thanks a lot, sir. George, don't you worry about us. You hurry up and catch that train now. Bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye, Ray. Bye, Sally. Bye, 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 bye. See you Christmas. Bye. 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 I thought they'd never leave. Well, it's just you and me now, buddy. And now for a nice, relaxing few days. Oh, boy. 
Uncle George, you're supposed to play with me. Oh, come on, Melvin. You're a big boy. You can entertain yourself. But I'm sick, Uncle George. Real sick. I shouldn't be allowed to play alone. I might faint and nobody know about it. <coughs> oh, boy, are you ever a slice off your Uncle George's ham? <laughs> okay. Performance like that should be rewarded. Oh, boy, let's play rocket ship. Oh, Melvin, wait a minute. What's, what's rocket ship? You'll love it. Yeah. I got all the equipment, Uncle George. Oh, boy, isn't that great? What have you got there? Hey, let's see some of that stuff. Now we just got word on our interplanetary two-way wrist radios that the moon people are attacking. We got to disintegrate them. <laughs> jump our claim. Grub, well, why don't you use the oven in the kitchen? Because we're in the middle of a blizzard in Alaska. Oh. Here, eat it fast, Uncle George. Then we'll get dressed and hit the trail. What is it? Jerk beef. It tastes like shoe leather. It is. I cooked two of Dad's inner soles. Send for the St. Bernard to take us back to civilization. I've had it. Well, what do you want to play now? I want to play dead. Come on, Uncle George. Oh, let's relax for a while. After all, tonight's Christmas Eve and... Hey, wait a minute. Tomorrow's Christmas. I think we should go down to Stacy's and see Santa Claus. Aren't you a little old for Santa Claus? Not for me, for you. Oh. Come on. Uh, and do us both good to get out of the house. Okay, but I warn you, no matter what you're asking for, I already got you your present. <laughs> <gasps> there he is, Melvin. All right, then, get in line. Me? I came here for you. All right, then, we both get in line. Young lady, if you don't unhand me, I'll call the store detective. I'm very sorry, sir. I didn't want you stepping on the toys. That's all right. Uh, may I help you? Here you are. Thank you very much. Okay, let's get it over with. Huh? I said let's go see Santa Claus. What's Santa Claus? Uncle George, come on! Uh, oh, Santa Claus. Well, look, why don't you go over and get in line, and I'll wait here. You gotta come. It was your idea. Now, come on. Come on. Hey, you get in line, and I'll wait right here. Okay. George. Hey, George! It's me, Freddie Thompson. Oh, for crying out loud. Hi, Freddie, how are you? What are you doing in that makeup? This is my agent's idea of a big part. Well, at least you're working. Yeah, and I love kids. Got two of my own, so it's fun, you know. Sure. Hey, uh, Freddie. Yeah. You know the gal on the train counter? No, no, I don't. Think you can put that in my stocking? Well, all the single guys around here say she's a very cold potato. What do you mean, cold potato? Well, all the boys say they can't get to first base with her. All you get is a hearty handshake. Well, maybe it takes the right guy. Oh, well, well, well. Now, tell me, what would you like for Christmas? Well, I would like an electric train with two locomotives and tunnels and switches and lots of tracks. Hey, that's an awful lot to ask for. Quite expensive. That's what I want. Now, I'm sure you'd be just as happy with a cowboy suit. 
I want an electric train with two locomotives and tunnels and switches and lots of tracks. Oh, I know you just love a cowboy suit. I want an electric train. I said a cowboy suit. But I want an electric train. Freddy, if he wants a train, let him ask for it. Look, do you mind? This is my kid. I'll see you later, Freddy. I'm sorry, what did you say? I said, where's your little boy? Over with Santa Claus? Oh, he's not mine, he's my nephew. I'm just a lonely bachelor. Is there anything here you're interested in? There sure is. May I show it to you? I'm looking at it. Please, if you don't want to buy a train. Oh, but I do. Uh, I'm very interested in trains. As a matter of fact, I want to get the very best for Melvin. Especially after what's happened to his parents. His parents? Yes, it's the usual story. Red tape. They're traveling people. Missionaries. And there was a mix-up in their passports, and the immigration authorities won't let them back in the country. And right at Christmas time, too. How awful. Yes, yeah, broken poor little Melvin's heart. There must be something you can do. Try to bring him a little cheer, that's all. Well, I can replace his father somewhat, but Christmas without mother, that's pretty hard to take. You wouldn't be interested in cheering up little Melvin, would you? I'm afraid I can't. It was just a thought. Did you get the train yet, Uncle George? I'm just getting it, Melvin. We'll take one of those train sets. Good. And here's my little gift to you, Melvin. I hope your mummy and daddy come home real soon. Well, I was just telling the young lady about your parents, Melvin. Them not being able to get back in the country. Oh, oh, oh yes. They're behind the Iron Curtain. The Iron Curtain? Oh, yes. Uh, I didn't want to say anything. Uh, you might think it was an obvious bid for sympathy. They're getting their braids washed. Oh, no. Not exactly. That, that is, we're not sure. Don't overplay your part, Melvin. Uh, I guess it was crazy to think you might stop by and brighten the Christmas of a strange little boy. I, I would like to, but... Well, I, I have plans. Of course. Just thought you might help us set up the train. I'm not very handy. I can't even change a light bulb. Do we have to go back to that old apartment now, Uncle George? Just the two of us? I'm afraid so, Melvin. Stiff upper lip. Stout fella. Well, look. If you'll meet me in an hour at the employee's entrance, I'll stop by for a while. To help set up the train anyway. Really? I'll be waiting. I'll recognize you by the halo over your head. I'll get the train. You see, Melvin? There is a Santa Claus after all. Yeah, but we sure had to help him. Well, uh, we, uh, sort of left in a hurry, you know. It's, uh, it's one of those things. I, I told you we needed a woman's touch. <laughs> here, let me take you go. There we are. Now, I want you to come over and sit right down over here. Uh, Melvin? That's a good boy. Sit right down. Hey. That's you. I'm hungry. Aren't you always? How about you, Jean? I could eat. Good. Egg sandwiches all around? That's my specialty. Mine too. I'll make them. Just point me to the kitchen. I'll start putting the trays together. Good. That's why I think it was so great of you to come over tonight. Not really. Lots of people would have come under these circumstances. I'm glad lots of people didn't come. I'm glad it was just you. Are you two going to stay in there all night? Come on. I got the train ready to be hooked up. I thought you came over here to play with me, not Uncle George. <laughs> Here at Ford's Proving Grounds in Dearborn, you're about to see a test crash staged by Ford's Engineering Research Group. Watch the car that's going to be hit. Notice how the doors remain closed in spite of the tremendous impact. Why is this so important? It's important because statistics show that your chances of escaping injury in an automobile accident are doubled. 
when you're not thrown out of the car through an open door. You're twice as safe when you remain inside the protective shell of the car. Now, here's a door with a conventional door latch. It keeps the door tightly closed when the center post is rigid, but in a crash, the impact can spring the door frame like this, and the door can fly open like this. Now, this door is equipped with Ford's new lifeguard double grip door latch. When the same force is exerted on the center post, the door remains securely closed. That's because Ford designed this interlocking striker plate here to overlap the door latch rotor like this and thus withstand forces from two directions. Ford's new lifeguard door latches give you added protection from doors springing open in a collision. You get them as standard equipment on all the new 56 Fords. And they're only part of a brand new family of safety advances called lifeguard design. Why not get the complete story at your Ford dealers? Merry Christmas, Uncle George. Uh, I said, Merry Christmas, Uncle George. Oh, Merry Christmas, Melvin. Merry Christmas, Jean. Aunt Jean. Aunt Jean, are you going to marry your Uncle George? Out of the mouths of babes. Merry Christmas, Melvin. Aren't you going to kiss Uncle George? No coaching from the audience. You're under the mistletoe. I put it up like it told me, Uncle George. Well, we really can't ignore an old tradition. Go and ahead. I gotta get something in my room. Merry Christmas, Jean. Merry Christmas, George. Nothing like a little mistletoe to get to know each other fast. Maybe, maybe too fast. Well, maybe we should spend a little time getting acquainted. Happy New Year. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Halloween. I think we know each other well enough now. I could spend the rest of the calendar getting to know more of you. Are you sure you don't feel this way because it's Christmas? Try me at Easter. Or Lincoln's birthday. Or even St. Swithin's Day. If I had you, every day would be a holiday for me. I thought you two were going to go on until New Year's Eve. I think I'd better be going. Oh, you can't go now, Jean. But I must. You haven't even played with my train yet, Aunt Jean. I'll come back some other time. Well, look, why don't you stay for a nightcap or a cup of coffee, then I'll take you home, huh? I'll take a cab. You have to stay with Melvin. But you only live on 78th Street, five minutes from here. No, really. Besides, there isn't any coffee left. I'll go to the delicatessen and get some. It's just downstairs. We need some milk anyway, and, uh, well, Melvin always has warm milk before he goes to bed. Since when? <laughs> All right, I'll stay. Good. But just the coffee, and then I must go. Be right back. You know, I wouldn't trade my Uncle George for a new space helmet. We have a lot of fun together. He's just like one of us kids. Here, now, if you wanted to go backwards, you just turn this knob. Say, that's real cool. Well, that couldn't be George back already. Yeah, he's real fast. He sure is. Well, well, for heaven's sake. Isn't it nice? Merry Christmas, everybody. Mom, Dad, you're home at last. Don't you remember me? It's me, Melvin, your son. <laughs> How is it in Siberia? Siberia? Uh, who was in Siberia? Uh, you see, they didn't have their brains washed. They don't even remember. Brains washed? Uh, darling, what was in Melvin's milk? 
Well, I... Perhaps you can help us out. I'm... I'm just as confused as you are. Let's start slowly. Uh, we are the mother and father of this boy. I think. And you must be a friend of George's. That's right. Jean Morgan. Where is George? Oh, at the store. But didn't he tell you we were at a wedding in... Don't say a word, Mom, till you've been cleared by Washington. Oh! Melvin, cut that out. As my wife was saying, uh, we were at a friend's wedding in Maine. You weren't behind the Iron Curtain. Now, you see, we weren't supposed to be back until tomorrow, but, well, we flew in to surprise them on Christmas Eve. Well, Uncle George would be surprised. The, the story I got had you both captives behind the Iron Curtain. And he was going to try to get the president to intervene. Isn't that oh. just like George? <laughs> now, he's always putting on a big act. You have to admire his taste in leading ladies, though. They're always very pretty. Have you done many plays with George? Just one. A comedy. And I think the laugh's on me. We had a very short run. Tell George I didn't like the part. Don't go in, Jean. Good night, Melvin. Merry Christmas. What's the matter with her? Was it something I said? It usually is. Uh, Mom, Dad, it's Christmas, remember? Peace on Earth, goodwill toward men. Coffee coming up. I'm back, dear. Uh, I can't tell you how happy that makes me. What are you doing here? We live here, remember? Yeah, I know, but where's Jean? Miss Morgan? She left. In one of the fastest exits I've ever seen. Oh, no. All right, give me a playback from the point where you two came in. And don't leave out a line. Oh, I get it. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Uncle George. Merry Christmas, George. Tis the season to be jolly. Tra-la-la. Ah, uh, you're going to be able to fix it up with her? Ah, uh, no chance. I ought to deck the halls with boughs of holly dipped in cyanide. Uh, may I play through? I'm sorry, George. I don't know why I fed her all that hogwash. Well, maybe I could help Uncle George. She likes me. Yeah, I know she does. But I don't even think that would help. If I could just get to see her and talk to her, tell her I really meant everything I said. Why don't you dress up as Santa Claus and come down her chimney? Oh, stop being funny, Ray. Don't you realize this is the first girl George has ever been really in love with? Wait a minute. That's it. Well, what's it? What are you going to do? I want to play my greatest role, Santa Claus. Hello, Freddy. This is George Jackson. Look, Freddy. You still got that Santa Claus costume? Great. Can I borrow it for a couple of hours? You're a prince. I'll be right over. Tis the season to be jolly. See you later, sis. -la 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 -la. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Yes? Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Are there any children here? No, I have no children. Oh. Well, I'm from the boys' club, you see. And we're collecting toys for the needy children to brighten up their holiday. I'm awfully sorry. I, I have no toys. No toys, eh? Well, I'm very thirsty. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to let me come in for a drink of water? Certainly. <laughs> Quick, hide in the bedroom. Please, come in. Thank you, young lady. Thank you. Won't you sit down? <sighs> you must be tired. A man your age. Uh, just a little. <clears throat> well, don't tell me a pretty young thing like you is spending Christmas all alone. You must have lots of boyfriends. Oh, about a dozen or so. A dozen? Give or take a few. It really doesn't matter because I refuse to be serious with any of them. 
Men are all such liars. <coughs> well, I'm an old man. I've seen a lot more of life than you have. And most men are fine, decent citizens. And they'd give their right eye to marry a pretty girl like you. That is, I would, if I were young, that is. You wouldn't say that if you met the kind of man I did last night. Do you know I found out he hands the same line to every girl? He's nothing but a cheap actor. A cheap actor? That's right. What's his name? Uh, George Jackson. Nobody ever heard of him. George Jackson? Oh, yes, the famous television star. Oh, why, sure. You should have heard what he told me last night. What was that? He said, if I had you, every day would be a holiday. <clears throat> well, that's very, very charming. Sheer poetry. Sheer corn with a dash of bologna. But maybe he meant it. Maybe you're the first girl he's ever really been serious about. He could never be serious about anybody. I forgot your water. Excuse me. Hi, Uncle George. Hi, Melvin. Melvin! What are you doing here? Mom brought me over to try to square things for you. She didn't think your Santa Claus routine would work. Did you tell Jean? Sure, she knows it's you. No, she does, huh? Well, look, get in the other room quick and don't come out till I call okay. you. Okay. Here you are. Thank you, young lady, thank you. You know, I've been thinking. I feel this Jackson fellow was lucky you walked out on him. What do you mean? I mean, if I was him, I'd say, who needs you? What? That's right. You're nothing but a cold potato. You've a nerve to talk to me that way. Santa Claus or no Santa Claus. I've got a flash for you. You're not good enough for George Jackson. You can't tell when a man is sincere. That's a laugh. You think you know everything, I huh? know enough to know it's you, George Jackson. Then I know you know. Now you know how I really feel about you. And now you know how I feel about you. Hey, you're out of the mistletoe again. What? Oh. Well, we... really can't avoid an old tradition. Especially at Christmas time. From now on, every day is going to be a holiday. What a lovely thing to say. Sheer poetry. been presented by Ford and the Ford dealers of your community who sell and service Ford cars and trucks, as well as A1 and other used cars. <laughs>